Now we'll look at sympathomimetic drugs, also known as adrenergic receptor agonists. They can be divided into those acting directly at the uh, adrenergic receptors, those acting indirectly by indirectly increasing the levels of the neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft, and those acting mixed. That means they are mixed acting because they directly act on the receptors as well as increase the level of uh, the neurotransmitter within the synaptic cleft. The direct acting are further divided into those which are selective for a specific receptor and the others which are non-selective and can act on multiple receptors. One thing to remember is that this selectivity is by no means perfect and if I say one drug acts on alpha 1 that doesn't mean it doesn't act on any other receptor it's just that its activity on alpha 1 is its predominant action. First we'll see the drugs that are selective for the alpha 1 receptor. These drugs will mediate vasoconstriction. These drugs include phenylephrine and methoxamine. A side effect of these drugs will be ischemia of course due to the vasoconstriction and reflex bradycardia. This reflex bradycardia occurs because after alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction this leads to an increase in the blood pressure. So the heart rate needs to go down in order to maintain normal blood pressure. These drugs can be used in hypotensive states and also as nasal, nasal decongestant where they constrict the vessels in the nasal mucosa and uh, cause relief of uh, symptoms of flu. Methoxamine was previously used as an agent in paroxysmal ventricular tachycardia. The mechanism behind the, uh, the use was the same by which they cause reflex bradycardia, that is they constrict the blood vessels leading to an increase in blood pressure which will cause a reflex bradycardia in order to maintain the cardiac output and blood pressure. Now to remember both of these drugs uh, that they have alpha 1 action predominantly, there is a mnemonic that there is an alpha tournament and Fen and his ox came first in that tournament. The second class of drugs which are selective for the alpha 2 receptor are clonidine, aproclonidine, alpha methyl dopa and brimonidine. What they do is we know that alpha 2 is uh, an autoreceptor, right? So when we use an agonist that acts on the alpha 2 receptor, it will lead to a decreased release of norepinephrine and thus a decreased sympathetic outflow because clonidine is a centrally acting uh, drug. It is used as an antihypertensive agent. And to remember these four drugs, we have the mnemonic that brims doped clones came second in the alpha tournament. So we have an alpha tournament in which Fen and his ox came first, but the Brim's doped clones came second. Now we'll see the one drug that is selective for the beta-1 receptor. It is called dobutamine. Dobutamine, by acting on the beta-1 receptor, has a great inotropic effect and thus is of great use in congestive cardiac failure. To remember this, uh, this class of drugs, we can uh, we can assume that there is a beta tournament now and dobutamine came first. Okay, so dobutamine acts on beta 1 receptors. Coming to the drugs that are selective for the beta 2 receptor, they are salbutamol, tabutaline, salmeterol, and formoterol. Now, if you remember and try to remember, these are actually anti asthmatic drugs that we discussed in the asthma video. Their side effects will include palpitations because they are not very selective for beta 2, right? And they have some beta 1 action as well. They can cause reflex tachycardia. Why? Because beta 2 causes vasodilation and in order to maintain the blood pressure, the heart rate needs to go up. It can also cause tremors due to increased glycogenolysis in the mm, skeletal muscles. To remember these drugs that they are selective for the beta 2 receptor, we can remember them that asthmatics came second in the beta tournament because we know these are anti-asthmatic drugs, right? So asthmatic because they cannot breathe, they cannot run fast, so they came second. Now some of these drugs which are very selective for the uterus are ritodrine and isoxaprine. We've already studied them in the endocrine pharmacology. 
but they are used to prevent premature labor and abortion because they uh, they inhibit the contractility of the uterus lastly we have one drug that is selective for the d1 receptor it is phenyldopam and as we know that d1 receptors present on the mesenteric and the renal blood vessels when they are dilated they can cause uh, they can find their use in hypertensive emergencies coming back to the non selective ones the first ones will be acting primarily on the alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors these drugs include oxymetazoline nifazoline and xylometazoline these drugs are mainly used as nasal decongestants uh, due to their alpha 1 vasoconstriction property they are used mainly locally the next non selective category is for beta 1 and beta 2 both and they include the drug isoproteranol also known as isoprenaline and what they do is beta 1 action will cause powerful cardiac stimulation and also dilation of visceral vessels by beta 2 action so it can be used in heart block to increase the heart rate and also in asthma to dilate the bronchioles but it is not very much used now nowadays because along with beta 2 effect it also has beta 1 effect that we do not need in asthmatics and we have selective drugs uh, that we have discussed uh, for beta 2 next is the hormone epinephrine which acts on all these receptors alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 and beta 2 why because it is it is released into the blood and it can even go to the nerve terminal and as well as to the beta 2 which is not innervated but it has a dose dependent action as i said that beta receptors are more sensitive than the alpha ones so at low doses epinephrine will stimulate beta 1 and beta 2 then as we in- increase the dose the alpha receptors will also be stimulated and at high doses the main uh, mainly alpha 1 receptors will be stimulated and the beta 1 and beta 2 will be less uh, stimulated next we have norepinephrine which acts on alpha 1 alpha 2 and beta 1 it can never act on beta 2 and thus can never decrease blood pressure remember this about norepinephrine now we'll see the drugs that indirectly act as sympathomimetics because they either increase the release of norepinephrine at the terminal either they inhibit the reuptake of norepinephrine into the terminal or either they inhibit the metabolism of norepinephrine by the enzymes mao and comt the releases include amphetamine tyramine and modafinil now amphetamines by increasing the norepinephrine levels at the synaptic clefts can uh, act as cns stimulants and thus can be used in narcolepsy which is a sleeping disorder they also are used as anorexant to promote weight loss by acting on the hypothalamus feeding center and also has a paradoxical effect in controlling hyperactivity or hyperkinetic disorders in children such as attention deficit hyperkinetic disorders for tyramine you need to remember the interaction with mao inhibitors that was described in antidepressants and modafinil is also used in narcolepsy the reuptake inhibitors are cocaine and tricyclic antidepressants we've already discussed them mao inhibitors and comt inhibitors are selegiline and entecapone respectively and they have been discussed uh, mao inhibitors have been discussed in antidepressants and comt inhibitors in anti parkinsonian drugs coming to the mixed acting ones they will act on all these receptors and also release norepinephrine and act as a releaser the drug chief drug is ephedrine and it is mainly used to control hypotension in spinal anesthesia patients the next drug will act on alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 d1 and also release noradrenaline it will not act on beta 2 receptor this is dopamine of course 
and this will be the neurotransmitter because it cannot find the beta 2 receptor. Dopamine is mainly used in cardiogenic shock, septic shock, severe cardiac failure with renal insufficiency. This is a very good use of dopamine because as dopamine has D1 action as well, so if there is heart failure with renal insufficiency, that will make use of the D1 agonistic activity and dilate these vessels. Lastly, we have one drug that acts on alpha-1 only and release nor uh, norepinephrine as well. It is mefentermine and to remember this we need to refer to the selective alpha-1 and mefentermine also uh, came first in the alpha tournament despite stopping to free norepinephrine and I guess he got rewarded for that. Now although we have discussed their uses, I wanted to classify these drugs according to their functions and their therapeutic uses. One are pressor agents that cause vasoconstriction, the other can be cardiac stimulants, bronchodilators that is the anti-asthmatics and nasal decongestants. The pressor agents include norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, phenylephrine, methoxamine, mefentermine, the cardiac stimulants include adrenaline, isoprenaline and dobutamine of course which is specific for beta 1. The bronchodilators include isoprenaline, salbutamol, terbutaline, salmeterol and formoterol while the drugs that are used as nasal decongestants include phenylephrine, nefazoline and oxymetazoline. That's all.